Hey everybody, this is your boy BK over here at the Play Away Podcast, and before we get started with episode 27, I just want to stop you right there, because I'm not going to let you sit here and listen to this episode, which is part two of our discussion of Justice League, without listening to part one. Part one, the Friday before we any of us got to see the Justice League, we did a spoiler-free kind of rundown of what you could expect for the movie, and then we kind of had our spoiler this episode so go back listen to episode 26 if you have not listened and if you have listened to episode 26 welcome back we missed you in a world where comics movies games rumors and kardashians come at you 24 7 three champions will rise to defend you from wasting precious time money and emojis bk nate and Derek will show you how to do it the player way. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, with all due respect, this is your boy BK. Once again, it's all once again, Patron once again, only a couple of days after the first post we made about justice league and i am back with the league of my own with my co-captains nate <laughs> i'm exhausted yes <laughs> yeah, that's with that death stroke and Derek. that's me corrupting the system absolutely man no gibber no gibberish this week no why would i ever do something like that i don't <laughs> i have an image i mean to why would i ever corrupt why would I ever corrupt a system? I mean, I'm corrupting the system by being a part of the system this week. Exactly. <laughs> that's well, all. ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we are that premier blitz cast, and here's what we're about to do. I'm a, we're, we are now live on um, Google Hangouts, and we are also recording for our podcast, so you can get it either on YouTube to watch our beautiful faces, or you can just listen to us like you do and. Listen to the sultry sounds, baby, of the co-captains of the Play Away podcast. And we do sexy voices like smooth jazz. <laughs> the Player Way. Exactly. I can't do it as well as Derek. Derek, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Player Way. There you go. Look, at he got right <laughs> up on that mic this time. Well, guys, with no further ado, we're about to go straight in. Um, I got my trusty, dusty timer going, and the 60 minute starts now. Justice League is in theaters. I watched it not once, but twice, and I almost watched it thrice. Derek, what about you? Uh, just one one time for the family man, but a good time it was. One time, one time. I watched and it. And Nate, yawning on the microphone. It like three hours ago <laughs> <laughs> for the first time. Dude, fresh, fresh reaction. So, Nate, let's start with you. Nate, your fresh, uh, hot uh, sports opinion, I, I as Derek think would you really say. I want to start with me. I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't. It was okay. I, 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 it was I definitely okay. I go watch it tw- twice or thrice. Are you not no. entertained? Are you not <laughs> no. entertained? Derek, <laughs> Derek, you take it. Come get this, boy. <laughs> well, I. Um, I was I was entertained. I was very yes. entertained to the max um, for me. Um, I I, I feel I uh, I I watched some. I, I'm going to give a shout out to to the nice guy cast one time um, because uh, the other night he had a live. Uh, oh, discussion. are you talking about Karan That is that's all. Um, he was talking about it. And he had a few points that I jotted down. Um, how he was saying, he's like, well, I didn't, I, he felt like he didn't get enough Superman or he felt like he didn't, didn't get enough, um, just development with regards to, or like Superman and, and just, just, and I was reading through the comments and I was just going through it and I, and I was just thinking this movie is the justice league and DC has already introduced you 
half of them and given oh. you a teaser of the other three to which you right. could have looked up online and had a rudimentary knowledge about Cyborg Flash and Aquaman. And even if you didn't, this movie was the movie to educate you on those three, Bro. which is why it circled around the background of those three. And even with the Flash, we don't need much of a background because we already know it's the Flash. We know it's Barry Allen. We know he's actually the fastest man alive. Not like CW. I like the fact they even had him dealing with the Speed Force before he got a job. So we're not going to have to deal with this ridiculous treadmill CW three seasons of, is he fast enough? Oh, he ran 801 miles an hour. No, he can run faster than time. Give him the flash speed as he needs to. And DC just went ahead and did it. Like, we don't need to know the background of Superman, Batman, nor Wonder Woman. And even people don't know the background of Wonder Woman. They just know it's Wonder Woman. Like, these are iconic figures. We don't need to develop them. We already know. If anybody, people are going to be curious about Cyborg. Okay, cool. And they probably gave him the most background. Like They really got it. They spent a lot of time with him. Yes. And it's like, what, what do we... What do we need? This was like watching an animated DC movie to me. This like, is what I've been saying. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. That's what I've been saying. I said oh, forever we've been asking for DC to finally borrow from their totally animated films, and they finally have done it. You That's feel me, I, Nate? I was excited. <laughs> you feel me, Nate? <laughs> I feel like so DK much for that hard wire mid high five. Yeah, you, you froze for a good five <laughs> seconds. Okay. Anyway, what I was saying. Anyway, what I was saying. Just remember, it's going to continue recording on this side. All I was saying is that finally we. Oh no, no, we got been this. asking for an animated finally. film. DC, calm down. Borrow from your animated titles. Follow the exact path of an animated movie, and they finally did it. And that's ex. It. Well, I liked it because it it stepped in. With, because, kind of like what we talked about with um, what we appreciated about Spider-Man. Like, it just jumped in. Like, you know enough. We don't need to go too far. Like, we know that Superman's dead. And we all knew that he was coming back thanks to Zack Snyder. Like, if Zack Snyder had to cut out that whole coffin scene from Batman versus Superman, or Batman Donna's Justice, as BK should be calling it, and everybody else should as well. um, If we didn't know that, then no one would have been speculating about Superman's return as much. So I like the fact that they're like, let's go ahead and rip this Band-Aid off and get him involved with this idea, and that way y'all aren't waiting until the end of the movie thinking Superman's going to be showing up. Like, why do we need to know more about Superman? We know enough. Like, we don't... We know! We There's nothing that we... We don't... People are upset about Frost Breath. Oh, well, he didn't have that in Man of Steel. It's Superman. He has it already. So what if you didn't see it? We didn't see Batman's new ship in Batman vs. Superman, and no one's upset about that because it's Batman. He builds things there. Like, Derek, calm it, down. It, it, Sit down somewhere. Let's calm down for a second. We're, we're too excited. We're hype. We're hype. Let let's, me calm let, down. <laughs> I am Man, hype. Tell us what you're... They are who they, they thought we were. I, I feel like you're going to be the, the voice of people who are in the majority, are in the majority. Because most people, they thought it was okay, but there was nothing to write home about. So, tell us what prevented you from writing home about this one. I mean, look, in all honesty, I really wanted to enjoy this. Um, I usually like to let the movies digest, you know, Mm -hmm. for a couple days and ruminate about what I really like. But my initial thoughts... Ruminate. The villain was downright terrible. Um, really? Let's, let's let's call that out from the start. Steppenwolf was just the diet Ares. What? Um, he was with come on. With Ares. All right, you all might right. as well have switched Hold him on. out it's, with it's, Ares, right, and I couldn't gonna... even tell the fucking difference between the two. Okay, I'll give it to you. Uh, secondly, I'll, this I'll, this I'll movie looks like Nate. he was very similar. Everything I'll, was I'll reshot, but the action scenes, like that, you know, all the dialogue scenes. That's obviously all Whedon. Mm-hmm. And but except for they kept Snyder's action scenes. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I I just didn't. I don't know. Uh, some of the jokes fell flat. It was sort of an empty theater because it was a matinee. You know, obviously people mm-hmm. are at work. So some of the jokes seemed like it fell flat. Like a lot of flashes jokes. No one laughed. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And let me tell you, there was like, this I, one moment this where I'm was, not going to lie. I rolled my eyes when Superman comes in at the end and he says, I love truth and I'm actually a fan of justice. 
and I, I, that just, I don't know, it was such a stupid line. I almost felt like someone should have popped in with the Suicide Squad dialogue. And, what are we, some kind of Justice League? <laughs> you know? So, okay. This is Aquaman. He's got my back. He's trying to steal souls. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with him. <laughs> you know? All right. So, it's, so here's what I, here's my theory, Derek. Here's my theory. Cause Nate just, he, he, go ahead. Before, before, before you hit the theory, I just want to take a, a small detour with the short rabbit hole of Steppenwolf and just kind of piggyback off how I appreciate that this was like an animated movie because it was the Justice League. We're worried about them. Villains are going to come and go, but the Justice League is going to be handling them. So I, I didn't need I didn't need to know that much about Steppenwolf. Like we, we knew that it was Steppenwolf the whole time. We knew that it was Darkseid's uncle, blah, 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 parademons, so on and so forth. But it doesn't matter who it is. Like, we were more focused on the Justice League, how they dealt with it. Like, I like the fact that they didn't even show all the maniacal plans behind Steppenwolf. He just showed up, got what he needed, yeah. and then we just had to deal with him. Like it would was, do in an animated and, series. Like, an animated movie thing, would just flash those Steppenwolf, scenes. To back you but, up, Derek, it's very obvious that, like, Steppenwolf... It's very obvious that someone st- sent Steppenwolf there, and that was confirmed at the end when his axe which was giving him his power and his control and his ability to boom tube everywhere. When that got broken by Superman uh, w- along with Wonder Woman, someone boom tubed him back to wherever he came from. So it's real obvious somebody yeah. was in control of those boom tubes. He and he even says mother. Like he's calling yeah. out to his mother, which if you're a fan of the comic books, you know that the essence. And we know well, who mother yeah, well, is. Some people thought it was Granny Goodness. But it's not Granny Goodness. His mother, the the mm. his mother's mm. essence okay. is actually in the boxes. So when he calls him his mother's box, like that, this his mother's boxes. <laughs> he was it's, looking for his mother's boxes. They are his mother's box. <laughs> anyway, but no, no, seriously, like he he in the comics, he that's what he alludes to them as is it's his mother's essence. So he spe- in his brain, he's talking to his mother. But it's obvious somebody else was sending him there. A lot of people said that they felt like they needed to see the other side of the boom tube when he came back to kind of show that he wasn't behind going there and that he was kind of serving someone greater and that would have rehabilitated that character for them. Nate, do you feel that way? He was just, I don't know. You know, that whole, the whole plot and then... I don't know. I just didn't really like him. I, I had the same same. All right. So now it comes to my theory. Okay. Now it comes to my theory. Okay. He's just. In a, my, it, there's no reason to care about his fucking plight. You know, like I don't. Why are you doing this? You come back after a thousand years. Did you want them to develop I him more? Make, give him something to do. You know, like I kept thinking, like they had that whole after they decide to bring Super back, Superman back to life with a fucking mother box. It would have been cooler for me. If Steppenwolf maybe lost that first fight they had under Go- Gotham Harbor, and so he goes, all right, fuck this, I'll bring Superman back. And that's why Superman's evil. You know, like, instead of this whole stupid quick fight, he's choking yeah, Batman. Okay, Batman, okay, Batman okay. should have, you know, when Superman was choking him, Batman should have said Martha. End of movie. No, oh, he's so sweet. He's so sweet. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, oh, hold on, hold on. He calls I'm... out Lois Lane, they fly to fucking Kansas. All right, you Nate, know, and then right, he Nate, stands Nate, in the farm Nate, okay. fields, and then he's like, "Okay, you. I'm good again." Nate, I, <laughs> I'm good I agree again. With you. I remember Let everything. Let me go with you. Let me go with oh, you. Oh, mom, Let Martha, me. Martha's here. Nate, you <laughs> won. You won, Nate. You won. Okay, all right. Let me. So let, let's go with that for a second. So what you're saying is you thought it should have been better if, like, keep the idea that there's this big gun that um, Batman has been working on just as a backup plan. In case he does bring Superman back, and they allude to it that maybe that's what the, that he, what he's trying to do, okay, and take control over. Mm-hmm. Him. And then what happens is they bring her in there, and then he changes, goes back to Kansas. Do you think all of that, keeping everything else the same except for the fact that Steppenwolf is what brought Superman back? Do you think the Lois being the big gun still works? Yeah, okay. that could have still worked. Okay. But the fact that him being evil lasted two minutes, you know, and all it took was seeing Lois and a quick flight back to Kansas and good old Martha. Mm-hmm. And he's back to normal. It, it it seemed very unnecessary. You might as well have just brought him back to life and not even had that little evil bit in it. Okay. I hear what you... Yeah. What, but do you not think... Yes. But that little ahead, evil... Derek, go ahead. Um, 
<laughs> that little evil bit was incredible just to clearly show his level of ability and being yeah. able to like we need him good because we were nothing before him and also showing the speed of him finally because they've never really extenuated his speed and then i'm telling you that i'm telling you <laughs> like the fact he's that was incredible like Nope, flat. And, but but also the fact that he didn't land a punch exactly. though either. He didn't he right. land that punch. Yeah. So Flash was on it. Comes, he only took right, so over. This is the third again. time I've tried but, to attempt. To like pull he's my brand new to, out, <laughs> and I've had to put it right back in my pants every single time. All right, go ahead. So man. I'm whipping it out this time, guys. All right, oh, shout out to Kevin Spacey. <laughs> it's a it's a big right. theory. Shout out to Kevin Spacey. It's a big theory. All right, so here's what's going on. We're whipping it out. Um, no regards. No no Why regards. Are so sad. And here's what's going down. Okay. I have a theory that something we've never really seen before is that when your fans finally decide decide to turn their back on you, kind of like with Justin Bieber when he got to that age where he should have grown up an extra two feet and he didn't, and his muscles should have gotten more developed and it never did, and his beard continued to struggle even though it should not have. Like he never quite hit puberty, and then girls started getting disinterested in him. DCEU is not going through this where they're now making great films. They've had Wonder Woman, which made a great impact in the box office, but seems to not because it persists to not be part of the conversation. OK, in my opinion, it was better than Thor Ragnarok. And yet somehow Thor Ragnarok continues to be in everyone's conversation, mainly because it's new. Yeah, like Wonder Woman is number two. Yeah. Top 2017 yeah. movie. So number and, two. and then I, I think. Where we're at right now is I think all fans need to kind of chill out a little bit. I think the movie we finally wanted is here, but it's too late. Like, it's too late. Like, they're like, hey, we're, we're moving on. Because in... People wanted this instead yes, of Batman did. versus and, Superman. And what's crazy... This type of movie. They wanted this type of movie, but Batman, quote-unquote. And what's crazy is this movie actually versus. rehabilitates Batman versus Superman big time. Because in this film, you see a remorsefulness in... Bruce Wayne when he realizes he fucked up like he messed up big time like he's like uh I should have did my research I was looking at just his powers and all of that I never actually looked at the man side of him because I never considered him a man and mainly because he didn't know anything about Clark Kent really he knew that Clark Kent he he was using Clark Kent as a disguise but during that that scene at the end of Batman vs Superman when he actually sees that he has a funeral, two different funerals. He has a funeral in public and one in private. And it's something that Bruce Wayne probably doesn't will never have. He'll never have a no one will ever know that he was ever Batman, so no one can ever truly appreciate who Batman is. He's he's the 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 white knight mm-hmm. that we were promised in the dark knight that turned into Harvey Dent Two-Face is actually Superman. And it's like, I it was, th- all those things weren't lost on me. People were like, man, you know, he, he's really changed, you know, he really changed his tune. There's obviously been a lot of time in between that first movie and this next one. I, I, t- I totally agree. And to, to piggyback off of this and, and really kind of compound with it, it's like, Bruce Wayne went through an emotional swing from Man of Steel to actually fighting the person that caused the damage to Metropolis and his own personal Wayne billing to the fact that he actually lost this guy in the state that the world was in. Now, maybe they didn't show how much the state of the world is in, but we know Mm -hmm. what the state of the world is in. Him having the realization of he was more human than I, he's loved, he Mm -hmm. got a job, he... like. Those are powerful realizations, and for people to skip yeah. over though, those are like those are huge human yeah. epiphanies that this man had about, and for to even go the the lone wolf uh, route of I'll take off these parademons if you guys can just figure out what to do with Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. and not even thinking past that. That tells you the emotional mm-hmm. state that Bruce Wayne was in. Batman would have had a plan for every single parademon and Steppenwolf before he even showed up. But this should tell you how much it's been weighing on Bruce's. Or I would like to think that this tells and, us how much this has been weighing on that, Bruce and beyond Wayne's that, heart. This is an older Bruce Wayne who who thought he saw it all. He twenty he years. He He's been Batman all, for twenty years. Thing, he seems to be a step behind. 
he's trying to keep up and he gets encouragement from Diana where it's like, wow, pretty impressive. You've only been at this for like a couple of days and you almost know as much as I do in the centuries I've been alive. And he's like, I mean, in, in his brain, he still thinks it's not all that impressive because it's not as quick as it needs to be. And in the fights, I love that in the fights, he's doing great things. But he's not able to do as much as his cohorts. And I love the scene where he lifts up his shirt and his ribs are bruised. And he realized he got ragdolled by Superman. And he's now, like, his role is to be Alfred to the Justice League. As Alfred is to him. You know? Like, he, his, him, his, him mentioning my superpowers being rich. I know that was a funny joke, but it is. I'll fund yeah. the Justice League because I can't hang with Wonder Woman. I'm not going to hang with Flash. I'm not going to hang with Aquaman. I'm sure as heck not hanging with Superman. Like, I am just a human. These people can all survive ridiculous things. I can't. I step in front of a bus. I die. Everybody else lives. You know what I'm saying? Just. You know, I, I, I even even fall in the house could kill him as opposed to anybody else. So him, like, it, it, it's just it just shows the the actual mortality. I really the mortality. So of obviously, the toll that Derek the and I are on. all up on the pineapple, um, tastiness of this film. I I, I just. <laughs> And and I tried to take the objective look. I'm like, did I just lower my standards so far to where I'm this enamored with it? You know, like I'm trying to take yeah. it. But this was just, it was a good movie. Like it picked up with the action quick. You, we jumped right into the story. We don't need to know much yeah. else about the players. We already yeah. know who we're who we're dealing with. Let's just f- fight, save the world, figure yeah. out how you guys are going to be the Justice League, and go so, on to right, the so next Nate, movie. Um, mm. Well, let's be real. There's well, we should form a league I think of our we own. We can all be pretty much certain there's not going to be a Justice League too. It, it, if anything, it's going to be called Flashpoint, and this fucking universe is going to get rebooted like some shit. Well, here's here, all right. So, so going with Nate, let's because honestly, this yeah. movie. I look. I know you guys like. It. I'm not here to try to hey, convince hey, listen, you that no, it's no, bad, hey, but hey, no, it's not a it's not, a, it's not a very good movie. It's a sloppy movie. It, it looks like a movie that's patched together, and they tried to they tried to rushed, do the I'll best with there. what they had probably. And yeah, so, I understand. And what they had was a lot of Snyder vision. They had Snyder and action and scenes and we didn't, we didn't dialogue. All right, so let's, exactly let's be organized about this. Let's, so let's be like, organized. At, for ooh, some reason, hold on, like, did you hear him be Ben Affleck did would suddenly that? That gain 20 pounds in between different scenes that took place right next to each other. You know, you yeah, could Rachel, tell when now, these Rachel, shots happened. My wife, Rachel, called that out. She's like, did he have a gut in that scene? I could have swore he had a gut in yeah. that scene. And then... And then when she watched it the second time, she was like, he's skinny at the beginning of the movie. So, yeah, I, 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 I'll give you that. Uh, I'll give you that. So go, let's go. Let's, let's talk about the, the, the majority of people. Ultimately, what history is going to say are these things. And shout out to What Culture on YouTube. What Culture, they have all kinds of awesome um, nerd culture videos on their channel. And they had a really good rundown of why critics hated Justice League. So here are the reasons. Number one, Steppenwolf. All across the board, yep. regardless of what Derek and I say, everyone says that Steppenwolf is a weak character. Uh, number two, the CGI. Now, for the most part, in my opinion, I th- this thought the CGI was great until the very end of the movie where there's two scenes, actually. The most glaring is um, Flash runs like a little girl. Like at the very oh, yeah. end, yeah. he's like, yeah, he's like <laughs> flapping his arms. Yeah, it's like, like he, enchantress. Yeah, it was like he, it was like he was throwing lightning in front of his feet. It was weird. I, I thought that was weird. Just run, dude. And and anytime he comes out of the speed force, he does this weird robotic kind of. He kind of does the robot a little bit. Like that first scene when they get on the rooftop. and they're right yeah. in front of Commissioner Gordon. He does like the robot like off of the Chappelle show. He's like. Mm. It's like the weirdest. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Commissioner Gordon, yeah. I'm not going to. He had no business being in this movie. Yeah. It, it seemed like there service. was probably a lot that was, was cut it? out. No, it, Derek, or it you... was just fan service. Like, I agree with that. It was 100% fan service. I was like, what? This does like, not. We could have they... used that time to do something else. We really could have. <laughs> now, I agree yeah. with that. Absolutely. Um, and then the second scene that was really bad was in front of the area that I thought was going to be the home of the Halls of Justice at some point but ended up just being the the Superman head statue that they never picked the head up ever 
which I thought was weird. It was just still sitting on the ground all that time. Like, y'all ain't gonna pick this shit up. I, I kind of, I kind of wonder. I, I was kind of wondering. I'm like, the only man that can do this like, is Superman, and he is gone. Exactly. I was like, why is the shit still on the ground? You can't he even. You can't even put graffiti on the wall in the hood for it not to be painted over. <laughs> you know, let alone apparently in the on the apparently in Metropolis. the side of town, you just leave big statues. It is art. Do not move this statue. Do not touch it. You just Superman leave it. was a saint. They need to know. Anyway, um, so but anyway, in that scene when um, when Cyborg loses control, his head does this weird thing. And it's really terrible CGI. I don't know if y'all are talking about. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but mm. it's when his arm turns into the gun, and he's like, "I can't control yeah. it." I'm like, "Why does your neck look like that? Control your neck, brother." You know, it's like, what is going on? So, so there <laughs> well, were there tell. were a couple of weak <laughs> CGI moments. Most of like you could tell the chin strap he had was real, yeah. but everything else was you know all obviously. Well, yeah, you could tell, like, I, I, I did kind of notice, like, whenever you, you could see, like, the actual piece of whatever on his face, and then the times that it was, like, Cause, like it was obvious, I guess, as it would yeah. be obvious, but, like, the zoom-in shots versus yeah. the, I thought it would you know, like, or even, even just the CGI with Alfred on the dock when the ship took off, like, what, it, obviously yeah, he's I, not there, why, <laughs> like, yeah, why even, why not just give that? him a practical suit to put on, I didn't, I didn't understand that. We could have given him a practical suit or give him the finished suit at the end that you see with the cyborg C in there. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that they could have done that earlier in the movie where he's evolving throughout the film and he's more suited up for the final battle. I think we could have gone with that. However, I thought his voice Absolutely. was incredible. I thought that sounded like cyborg from the video. Games. I really enjoyed how it sounded. He actually, I liked him more than. Other than Wonder Woman, I thought I was going to come out of this really like an Aquaman and Flash, but I liked Cyborg. Way Cyborg more was really good. Yeah. I thought he was very, very, and I'm actually wanting to see a his. He's got acting chops, dude. I was like, yes, that is Cyborg, the tortured soul. He doesn't know if he's human or what he is. I, that scene at the very beginning when when he's in his hoodie and he's talking with his dad, I could see a whole movie of that. I was like, okay, these are good actors. Mm. I could watch this as a film, and I like that he's in Gotham. I love that they left that alone. So, all right. So those are two. First is Steppenwolf. Second is the CGI. Third, for some reason, everybody is is really caught up on Henry Cavill's mu- mustache. The mustache CVI. That is. Yeah, the, he did look pretty fake in most of his scenes. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, that that's. Yeah. yeah. So people couldn't let that go. Uh, I'm not even gonna argue about that one. Batfleck, uh, <laughs> they said that he was too flip floppy. That from the first film, from um, from Batman versus Superman to now, there was a huge change in him in particular. But that's uh, I that's supposed to be as like I don't think that should be. A, I yeah, don't think maybe. that should be what people hate about the movie because yeah. that's obviously where his arc should be going. And they know, a, and they said that he was a little smug and boring compared to everybody else. I thought that was intentional. I thought that he was supposed to come off as a little bit of an old fuddy duddy. Um, cause yeah. he's, he's older and he's at the end of his career and, uh, this is one of his last big battles. And so he's looking toward retirement at this point. That's what I thought, exactly. but they, but I get that he, they didn't make, they didn't do a good job of hitting that home for everybody so that they can really appreciate that about him. Um, it's a mess. So Nate, it was funny as Nate said this almost quote for quote. Quote unquote, it's a mess is 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 that next one that everyone said. So Steppenwolf is one, two CGI, Mustachio is three, f- <laughs> four is Batflex, flip floppy, smug boringness, and then five, it's a mess. And uh, I think that has everything to do with the one hundred and twenty minute mandate. Uh, yeah, yeah, the cut. It down. was very yeah. rushed. I, that's the one thing I can't argue with is I really could have. I needed another I thirty totally minutes agree. of this film. I this really should did. have been Batman versus Superman's runtime. It reminded yeah. me of like two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm like they could have given it two and a half hours. It, it reminded me it had the rush feel that I got with like Power Rangers, even though Power well, Rangers had all that five, time buddy. of like preparation. <laughs> exactly, man. That's I thought the same thing. Yes. I was like, this feels like Power Rangers to me for some reason. <laughs> That's ex- yes. Yeah, like unnecessarily rushed, but this one was obviously rushed. Like I, the two-hour part, like I, I, 
Like they could have used the uh, they hmm, they could have had another twenty minutes of for to help develop those. I mean, because honestly, a minute and a half yeah. scene is a lot in a movie. It can tell you a lot. We could have put a minute and a half with Cyborg or or Flash. You know, uh, you know if they if they really wanted the character development. But then again, that's that's also like the the trade off. How much more character development do you need for like? What did y'all want? Another scene of Martha and uh, his parents getting shot again, or Superman well, get rid of, traveling to Earth? Get as a rid baby, of the Gordon. Or? Get rid of Flash's father. Put some little. I have a little picture scene in this movie. Of I did like seeing the other. same actor as Austin. I, and you know, like uh, you could have gotten rid of Mara too. She had no business being in this Man. movie either. You know, <laughs> she you know what I heard? Nothing. You know what I heard? And I'm gonna come back to this in a second. But I heard that the b- there was a lot. We yeah, haven't even but, talked about but, him. But, much. but what I heard is, and, and this is the word going around, is that the scenes for for Atlantis came from the unfinished Aquaman film. So what they did is they they wedged in a lot of those. That's in what there, I heard, and it felt like that too. Uh, I was like, this doesn't feel like it fits into this film. Yeah, like they they obviously I mean obviously nope. they cut a lot out cuz Willem Dafoe was supposed to be in this movie as some Atlantean. I have no idea. But... I want to see Willem Dafoe as as the Joker to be honest with you. That's what I don't want to see. Um <laughs> the next one was Superman's Return. Um I think Nate is right about that. I think they could have even Here was my theory cuz we heard about Nate's theory about having Steppenwolf bring him back, which I think is the better idea. And that's probably what everybody thought was going to happen in the first place. Um, I mm-hmm. think the scene, if they could have also fixed it, if Cyborg and Flash came up with the idea to dig him up on their own and brought him there. And they were like, what the hell are you doing? And Cyborg was like, it's, we just thought, you know, <laughs> I thought we could figure it out. This thing fixed me. Um, you know, he, he talks sense. He's a fast talker. Like the, I, well, the idea, well, it, and it's because right. of the scene when they talk about there the accidents, and so they're like, "Why not bring another accident?" I think it should have been the Flash's idea, and he pulls. It's his idea to try to impress everybody because he's been tripping over his feet and everything throughout the film, exactly. which also alludes that to what might happen in Flashpoint. And then he kind of pulls Cyborg aside, and Cyborg's like, "This is a good idea." And I think there could have been a, a conflict between them and, and Batman. And actually, Batman could have been the vote that went in the other direction where everyone thinks Batman is going to be against bringing him back because he hated Superman. And he's a guy that is the coin flip that says, actually, I think their reasoning is, their logic is undeniable. I think it's unethical, but it's the weapon we need. And I think that would have been a good step in the right direction. Could have been a little. More dividing the team as opposed to everybody being on Diana's side. I think it could have divided the team yeah. a lot better. So I agree. I think it was very straightforward. Like, hey, let's bring Superman back. There wasn't enough. How do we get there? And definitely a mid a mid fight. I think we could have had that fight at the very beginning. Um, the big gun shows up. And instead of him immediately copping to her, he's boom tubed away. And throughout the rest of the film, he's kind of Perfect. conflicted back and forth on what he's going to do. And when it goes into the final battle at the last minute, he kind of winks at – he's about to kill Batman, and he kind of winks at him. And he's like, oh, he's on our side. And then they all do the thing. Yeah. So I think yeah. – I, I Then think he, he could have hit him with, I'm a fan of justice then too. He could have hit yeah. him then. <laughs> Yeah, what well, are we, some sort of justice? I'm a fan league? of justice. <laughs> <A>. well, <laughs> I think <laughs> that's so funny. I think you're right. I think he could have said something like that. You know, he says, you know, Steppenwolf says something like, you know, um, you know, I, I, something about truth. You got, you all don't understand the truth. And he goes, yes, and I'm a fan of truth, but I'm also a fan of justice. And then you would have known. Oh, he's about to flip, you know, like that would have been. So, yeah. It, and I think that I think that goes back to the idea that this is the rush. A fit, well, I think this is because it's a this goes to the it's a mess idea that there's two mm-hmm. different movies mm-hmm. going on here. And obviously the parts of it we like, I think, are the Joss Whedon parts. The parts that don't quite fit are all of them. The unfinished mess that Joss Whedon had to kind of pull together from this yeah. disjointed film and I and I think he did a great job fixing it but it's still very obvious that this is a tale of two different directors. Absolutely. And but it does it does provide me with with hope going forward 
uh, for them, just, just as Wonder Woman did, and that was all, you know, Snyder. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I mean, I there were several parts in it. I, I had the Marvel feel of mm-hmm. the movie. I was like, this is clearly... But, you know, it works. Plug yeah. and play. DC has... DC has the most iconic comic book characters. Like, when mm-hmm. when when you... Mm-hmm. W- or, yes. like, just period the end. I mean, Superman, Batman, Flash, yeah. Wonder Woman. Like, I think of all those bef- well before I, any- I think of any Avengers. And then I probably think of Hulk. And then I probably go back to DC. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, like they... They have so much or to work with. you would have with. gone to, like, Spider-Man or X-Men. Yeah, you know? Spider-Man, like, X-Men, yeah. Hulk. I'm, I'm going to think of them before I'm thinking of Iron Man or Thor every yeah. single time. So w- with all that material and all this thing that, that Whedon had to step in, I think he did a phenomenal job with the time frame that he had to come up with this type of movie yes. and still produce it without actually taking the step back to be like, let's just push this back to March and do it right. Right, the fact that he actually still held this d- deadline that's the, I, I I have to respect and that. And this goes to and the last point million? that what culture made. The la- and Derek, you pulled this together really well. You drew some conclusions and dr- and kind of made some comparisons to Marvel. And the final thing that what culture said is that um, it wasn't a particularly clever film. Considering the iconic figures you had, what statement did it make about humanity? And at least Wonder Woman made a stance about love and what love is all about and understanding that with all of the dangerous, um, terrible emotions that humans have and what we come out with, there's still love at the heart of all of it. And you can use Mm -hmm. that. And there wasn't any sort of lesson to be learned from this film, which is why I thought it was very good to... It reminded me a lot of the um, Justice League Apocalypse film that uh, came out not too long ago. Was that was that called Justice League Apocalypse or what was that called? Are you Justice talking about League the one? War? There's Justice, Justice League, League War. War with Dark Side. Yes, that's yeah. the one. It reminded me a lot of Justice League War because how Superman I had a comes lot of in at of the that. end. That's how he, that Henry Cavill watched that film had to, and then dude, he his, he had to his Superman that whole just scene like in the that. street. Yes. When Superman, because he's yeah. that, that whole fight between him and Batman where you clearly see that there's just no match. And then finally Batman was like, all right, Clark. And then it stopped him. What? What do you know about me? And then that, like I said, that I, I totally with you on that. That that's that's those are those things that kept giving me that feel like, yes. because I've already invested how many hours into these characters are just on my own. Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, BVS, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, the Green Lantern, like, I already know, like, those are the characters that y'all have outlined for us that go from the pages to the screen, Mm -hmm. stick with those characters, and I feel like that's what they're trying to do, but they have so much to, like you said, what statement. Derek, you keep part. setting them up, and I'm about to keep knocking them down. Steppen, Steppenwolf. Okay, so first and for, foremost, in my opinion, out of any other comic book film, and I put this movie up against Captain America: Civil War, and here's what I would put it up against: the action scenes in this film are some of the finest action scenes I've seen in a superhero film. I legit at several times said, "Yeah, the Justice League would kick the shit." Out of any of the Marvel, the teams. Avengers within. I'm yeah, telling you, period. I was the like, end. even Just, with the Hulk, even, even the with s- the Hulk, I was like, oh like, man, like, it, because it's it's not yeah. even a contest. They they yeah. pulled together. Be- another another thing that, that well, I that's had a, also a, I think that's one of their downfalls. Yep. is. Like these action scenes, you see Batman's just sitting in the wayside doing. Av- there was one part where he was holding like the alien gun, like he was holding a gun against Doomsday. And I was like, get mm-hmm. the fuck out of here, dude! You well, know, Flash, what- Flash, they really made like Spider Man. You know, just yeah. a nascent hero making mistakes. He keeps tripping, yada yada yada. But Aquaman, that whole man honestly didn't even seem that Flash- powerful to me. Oh, where he was like circling around. The... Like th- that was that was pretty neat. I like that they kept showing yeah. the lightning. Pretty much the lightning. I like the way they showed his speed. Yeah, <laughs> it puts the lightning. Yes, in. lightning in the fuel. Yes, <laughs> and, but yeah, um, but the, what? But ultimately, the downfall but, you know, of the Justice League. You, hold on, hold on. But the ultimately the downfall to go with what you said, Nate, of the Justice League is if you're gonna have these amazing characters, you got to have a, a boss that's even better. So his action scene starts the movie off so well. He kills, he kills Amazon's like he's eating popcorn, he, mm-hmm. and so you expect him, so you expect him to open his mouth and have like something profound, and he was a fucking idiot. 
Like he's yeah. like, mama, mama bucks. My mama love my mama bucks. What? My what mama be a nude god. Martha. <laughs> Like what would have made what would have made sense? Go, what I would have done is Steppenwolf would have been my first half of the movie uh, uh, antagonist. That's what he would have been. He would have been the preparation for who was really coming. That's what I would have went with this because we already have the iconic characters. We've got Superman back already. He he's he can handle Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. so they could have had that. And then it because if they're not going to pour that much energy into the villain then set up for a better villain. You know what I mean? Like, uh, See, I disagree. I disagree. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It goes back to our last episode where we were talking about um, the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. And okay. the reason why we need, the reason why we as an evolved audience need a villain who is a super fucking genius like Mr. Glass is because in real life, the true geniuses are incredibly detached and they are exceedingly amazing at being creative with killing people. Osama Bin Laden. Uh, you talk about um, Adolf Hitler. Like, you name any of the greatest big bads of all time. And these men were geniuses in their own right. They were able to take entire nations and turn them. I mean, I've heard recently. And get them on bended knee. I've even he- and get I've them even on heard- bended knee. Dude, I've even heard <laughs> recent theories that really the Bolsheviks were really the, the the bad guys and Adolf Hitler was the thing that stopped the Bolsheviks from conquering the world so really we all should be happy that Adolf Hitler did it like that's crazy like this man dead still inspires that kind of growth in his own legend so to have someone as strong as Steppenwolf, we don't respect him if he's like the Hulk. Even the Hulk at some point had to start speaking and for in order for us to really like him. I think that's well, the that, reason why we hate, that's what we I'm hate saying. him well, as a character. I, when, when I when I say like um and that's the Steppenwolf preparation for somebody, then then perhaps the because I wanted the villain that I heard in the trailer that told me about no protectors here. No yeah, lanterns, that speech, no Kryptonian. That speech I wanted has, that yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, so I would have been even, I guess I would have been placated if that voice had maybe been Darkseid actually mm-hmm. talking. And I just sent Steppenwolf before I come in at the end of the movie. Uh, and you, deal you, with mean, the you mean a Darth that, Vader slash Kylo that's, Ren? Where that's we what I was saying. The I wanted, yes. I yeah. wanted I wanted Steppenwolf to be the first, when I say the first half, I mean, no, no. My, bro, my, my what, cousin coming or nephew's coming. Here and you're gonna have to answer to him, but first you have to answer to me, and then show his power, show his ability. But then these the person, as you mentioned earlier, the person that's controlling these boom tunes is my nephew, and he's on his way now that I've collected this. He has the power to get here now, or or whatever you know. We can fix that, but that's what I'm saying because the power of the Justice League, Steppenwolf was nothing. Like he was nothing. Like Superman could have. Wonder Woman was gonna handle Steppenwolf. You know what I mean? Like he. Like they were just trading yeah. blows. I, I, I agree it's, that we should have seen some beams come out of a boom tube at the very end, maybe as Stephen Wolf was going away, and who, those chicks burned, you know what I'm talking and about burned a hole and burned a hole in Superman's S just as a as a farewell at the as end of the, the boom film. tube was closing. <laughs> yeah, with that truth. Him look or, up and, like, and like, you know like, who I'm like, thinking or, those three. No, no, you, actually, it would have been better. Mother's Superman, three girls. You know well, what I'm talking see, about? I, I, I don't, don't see, I don't want to see them yet. We don't want to see them yet. I think it would have been better if Superman tried to go into the boom tube to follow him. It's like, we got to stop him. Oh, and that, somebody. Them beams, them angle beams. Oh! And Superman, ah, right outside, right before the boom tube. Dude, the Omega beams? I would have died if I had saw an Omega beam. Like, Nate, what would you have felt if you had a saw toward the end of the scene as Steppenwolf is going through the boon tube, if you had seen an Omega Beam come out, zap Clark, and everybody, and everybody look up only to see that 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 gigantic blue shoulder just zoop right before that boon tube closed, and you <clears throat> knew that it was Dark Side with that gray skin. No, protectors. I would have. I would have much rather enjoyed if Omega Beams had Steppenwolf because he failed. Killed him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're right. To go through him. Yeah, you're right. right. All right. Like, like we really okay. should. We, like, you we, failed yeah, me right. for the we, second time, dude. You had one yeah. job. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. You're right. Nate is rewriting the film. Yeah. This is the second like time it. in this episode that Nate has rewritten the film, and he's right. We should have seen him come all the way out, 
Justice League gave everything they had, including Superman, to help. And as Superman is about to give and give his last little power up, yeah. the boom tube opens, and you think Steppenwolf is about to go up. You see his axe go up into the thing. You see the parademons going on top of him, and you think that's about to be it. And then, doosh, he yeah. comes out. Boom. And then you just see Steppenwolf get yep. disintegrated. Disintegrated. Yeah. And then you realize, and then he looks at the Ooh! Justice League, and, and then, then everybody dude, sees and then, that. And, Justice and, then, and, then Dar- and then he takes the mother boxes and just bounces out. Yeah. You know? That's yes. your ending. And then there. That's your ending. Right there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's your and ending. And you can you still have that little celebratory ending because they think they've just saved the world, yeah. but they have no idea. Like, this was all about Darkseid getting the mother boxes. That's all yes. he wanted. Well, yes. it would have been and cool. And then now he has them. They still play them, that method. It would have been cool. They still play that story. And what would have been cool is if he had hit Maybe. them with a thank you for thank you champions of Earth for helping me. You've you've beaten Steppenwolf. You served me and well. And we all and we all would have known like that was evil. But like he'd yes. be like, I shall take these and keep these safe. Like and it would have been really cool. That would have been really Man. cool if he had yeah. kind of played like he was a hero. I would have yeah. been Okay. All right. So, so I'm so gonna also what, assume <laughs> before like I'm just also gonna assume so so no one really cared about uh, Aquaman, huh? No one did. He was all right. He was I, like Wolverine. like he was just he there. Was Wolverine. He was. The I really Wolverine. wanted to like him. I really wanted to like him, but guys, he was he guys, was dude he bro. Was he was dude bro. He, yeah, he was the Wolverine. He was Wolverine. Like he was an extra character that was great to have, but he wasn't instrumental in the ending. That's what Wolverine always was in the comics. A cool character to have around to kind of add that dude. I totally uh, have a dude night with him and girls to be like, oh man, he's so hot, but he doesn't really add much to the film. Every time he came on the screen, females in both of the showings were like, "Mm -hmm." so that's it. That's it. That's That's all that was. That's all you need. You got to have a a man, Wonder Woman. So he worked out. I think that's (laughs) good. This didn't make me excited for Aquaman, the movie. No, Cyborg and Flashpoint were the two that were. Just go ahead. Yep. Just go ahead and combine everybody. Don't. I'll still (laughs) watch an Aquaman movie. Yeah, All yeah. Right, I so wish one thing I do wish they had in this yeah. moment, and they don't think they had it, was like a hero shot. You know, kind of. This is the first time we're seeing the um, Justice League like together. Like when Flash but, and Cyborg were fist bumping, standing next to Superman, Batman, and Wonder. No, Woman. I mean like you? like an Avengers type of camera circling around while they're all standing. You know, about to save the day. Theme music playing. They pl- made a big deal about Danny Elfman. Do you being mean the, like uh, in the? Or even like Guardians in the center two, of the, the chain in the is center of the Sokovia like, town when they were Nate, with Nate, Nate, might as town. well just some sort of cool hero moment like look <laughs> Nate, we get this Nate oh did. man we're in a Justice League movie Nate, they did, you mean they, like showing them defeat Steppenwolf as a team and individually yeah. doing awesome oh, things Cotton. yeah but no not together no <laughs> right, guys, there was nothing right. cool all right let's we gotta be cut real. It off. We got to cut it off. We got to move on. <laughs> anyway, so as you can hear, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 I will say, respect, I get what you're saying. If you are watching Justice League, if you're watching Justice League, <laughs> then you are doing it the the player way. Indeed. All right. So we it was like it, it's obviously it's worth a watch. I definitely think, and as you can hear from our conversations, it's definitely better than Age of Ultron. Would we agree with that? <laughs> Sun's getting real low. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I Sun's getting real Age low. Sun's Ultra down. Oh, this come it's nighttime. Oh, come on, dude. Anyway, <laughs> we're moving on. And we're moving on to what we all watched when we came home, as Derek alluded to last week, The Punisher. We all came home to that warm bowl of espionage and... Yeah. Brains. Yeah, man. (laughs) Bullets and bubbles and guts. I will say, this is a heavy little... I've watched up to episode six, and I have to take a break, dude. It's like Homeland. It's intense. It's like Homeland. Have you ever seen Homeland? It It definitely reminds me of Homeland. Very much so. Yeah. The whole time, actually, while I was watching, I'm like, man, this reminds me a lot of Home. Actually, I'll I'll take... I'll season it for you, VK. Go ahead, This reminds me... This reminds me of Homeland in the singular character, and then the violence uh, and and intensity of Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, though I can that, see that. 100%. especially uh, going down to the fact that the White Buffalo is singing a song while Punisher was killing the insurgents, and I'm like, he had so many songs with the same type of scenes in Sons of Anarchy. Man, this is so and it's so brutal, man. 
I lo- I'm loving the flashbacks and actually get, like seeing just getting to know him and I uh, and um the fact uh what's his name um Clancy Brown remembering him I was reminding Priscilla of uh, him and Daredevil season two you know yeah uh at in court and, and just just tying all those in and just getting to know that that man and it is is it is the violence and it is satisfactory yeah and it, oh. <laughs> yes you could even say it was camping exactly. it was that intense it, I, oh nice dad jokes hashtag um yeah i, I think it's good i, I want to watch uh punisher a little bit more it's a lot it's a lot it's um, it's just kind of a lot to right now it's just it a is. little early <laughs> i, I I don't know if the, like I don't I'm I'm not a fan of the the time of year. I would have much rather this earlier in October when we were all waiting on um, Stranger Things to release. There was like a show hole right around the beginning of October where I really would have appreciated this to go better. Absolutely, um, it's a little close to the holidays, and I think that's gonna su- that's gonna hurt its viewership. I, we don't really want to see this right now. That's I, I kind of feel. I don't feel that Marvel read the room. No, they didn't I read really, the room at this point. Hey, guys, uh, so tough. gun violence is at, like, an all-time high. Yeah, I think we should I ban guns, say, violence, mass shootings often. You guys, you know what would be a great show to watch? A show about a guy that does all those things, but just because he's mad. They probably he's really upset. They probably did want to release this earlier, but just from real-world events, yeah. like, it wouldn't have been exactly... <laughs> kosher <laughs> there's not a w- they, even even no even now it kind of feels a little like yeah kosher that was some good people, man. man that was really, <laughs> really, really it really could have waited until, kosher? they really could have waited until january like i really feel like january would have been fine i don't feel like it would have yeah. aged at all any no i just, I just that being it. said i this is much better than you know, like the last hey, three shows bro, that they've come and out, and it with. is straight out of the comic yeah. book. Like Micro is in there, I was like, "Oh, they going with Micro?" Oh yeah. Well, I even man. like the uh, change. Yeah, um, you know the bad guy, the man. How how far did you guys get, Bill I'm Russo? In six. I'm in six. Yeah. And you got you yeah. guys have met like his battle, but like I like the change because that mm-hmm. guy's Jigsaw. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like the change of his origin to being like a battle buddy with Frank Castle, and yeah. instead of just some mob boss or mob son of a mob boss. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you all this: Are we are we getting to a period of a little bit of uh, superhero movie fatigue? I don't think it's so. possible. There's a lot. I mean, but uh, it, I feel like there's a lot. But I'm, I'm glad that there's a lot. Uh, you know, like, like I'm looking I'm forward really... to February. Like I'm really ready for Star Wars. Like I'm really ready for something more fan, like fantasy like, and I'm really needing a break from Marvel and DC. I kind of feel like I just need to do me for a while. You know? <laughs> okay, I, I understand that. I mean, you know, it's just a lot. You just, you just. I mean, you. There's a lot of things going on, man. You got Guardians. You got Spider Man. You got Thor. You got Wonder Woman, and you got the Justice League all in the same year. Like I feel like, I'm and, about and to I mean, of course, right of now. course, the Mummy. And Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean was in there as well. So you know, I know that really of, took a lot. You know, speaking of which. Valerian House of a Thousand And Valerian, <laughs> of course. <laughs> shout, shout out to, uh, yeah. Get out. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> shout out to Cara Delevingne, who had a wonderful cameo as the Flash in Justice League. Oh, <laughs> but listen, guys, I really do, you know, now we're, we, this is a. In order for us to be so fatigued and, one, and, and just kind of feeling like we, it's been kind of, I feel like I just came out of a, a, a gangbang of movies this year. I feel like I'm kind of on the floor right now. I, I, I'm tapping out. Like I'm cocky. I feel like it's, almost, <laughs> I feel like BK stands for the wrong thing right now. And, I, like, and, and, and uh, I think, I think we need to do at the end of, I think, I think that in December, we need to dedicate a couple of episodes to the best movies of 2017 and another podcast to the worst movies of 2017. So here's what we're going to do. Um, in, maybe like a top five, bottom five kind of thing. I, 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 you know, I know that you want to head toward the bottom really quickly, but slow, down, slow, slow your roll there. I feel like top 10. Well, yeah, let's do top ten. Top ten, because top exactly. five could easily be all superhero movies and Star exactly. Wars. I think top ten. <laughs> 
And what I, here's what I want us to do. Uh, and and yes, I'm borrowing a little bit from weekly games chat. Love you guys, but we're gonna borrow. You know why improve upon genius? Okay, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's not throw any babies out with whole uh, bath water tubs. Um, I think it's a great idea for us to each individually vote on our top ten on our own, and then we reveal them on on the show live and talk about it. Yeah, counting down from ten all the way down to one. Ten all the way okay. down to one. What are you? And we gonna do that what, over a couple episodes? We're gonna do the top ten um, best movies, and then the top ten worst. I'm with it. Cool. I dig well, it. Well, guys, Mickey. man. What else you guys got going on this? Uh, this what do you guys got going? We coming up to Turkey Day. Gobble gobble, mm. gobble gobble. <laughs> um, I uh, I did want to say a little uh, a little comedy nugget. I did. I <laughs> <laughs> think I wrote it. I ain't all done. Hey. <laughs> Probably think I wrote it. I ain't know nothing. Hey, probably think I wrote it. Right? But when I got to eat a hook, cause over, I'm turk, I'm turk, I'm turk. Yeah, that just happened. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> that Sorry. is Turkey Day, man. You got to hit that, that cat is. daddy in the kitchen. Um, daddy. Speaking of, uh, I watched the, I don't know if you see it yet, but have you seen that D-Ray Davis stand up? Yes, on I Netflix? watched it. I, I just watched, watched it. it last night. I did. I watched it. I watched it on <laughs> Sunday. I'm a little disappointed because I felt like his the last one before was better. Power play is definitely a much better one, but this one was mm. pretty good too. I like this one just because like the the trueness of the topics that he was hitting, <laughs> like yeah. man, he was hitting some things. That's why some people were like, oh, "This kind of true," but it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty funny, man. I just wanted to see if you had peeped that. And uh, I know I know we're gonna be watching some sports over Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm going to see if my mediocre Cowboys can beat the Chargers. Yeah, At least you guys uh, <laughs> didn't get blown out by the fucking Baltimore Ravens. Man, <laughs> I, w- I was so hopeful after the previous game where like, it looked like they kind of put it together, Nate. And then I, w- I was like, Baltimore? And then, and then the, 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 Martellus, the Marty B trade. Like um, they sent Martellus Bennett back to the and the Patriots, or they waved him actually, and then the Patriots. Yeah, they him up. dropped him, and yeah, Patriots. Could, but I mean, he even came out and said he wants to retire soon. So yeah, this will probably be his I last think, season, man. Yeah, but yeah, Cowboys, uh, Cowboys, Chargers on Turkey Day, um, and I still, Lions I just want to say, I'm, nice. yeah, Lions, Lions, and Cowboys always play, and then now it's somebody else because now Thursday is not a sacred football holiday once a year anymore because, of course, money advertisements. How else are we going to get you to watch our sport if you don't watch all our commercials during it? Right? I watch a three-hour football game so I can see eleven minutes of actual football. Thanks, America. <laughs> Thanks, Mega <Megan laughs> Shake. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's why Americans can't get into uh, the actual truest, most popular sport on the planet, football, oh. because that actually shows the sport over 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so Yo. there's and no commercials. I don't feel the need to eat Skittles right now. What kind of sport is this? <laughs> and to kick a, a sports fan while he's down, a moment of silence for the Georgia Dome, man. One of the finest domes ever built went down this morning. Oh, uh, early this oh, morning, we, yeah, yeah, we watched it uh, crumble down. I'll send uh, Rachel actually sent me a video of it. I'll I'll send it to you guys via uh, chat. I know you guys might want to see that, but yeah. It, mm-hmm. Was there the any t- jet fuel involved in melting any of those steel beams? <laughs> uh, I don't believe so because that's just not a conventional way to destroy a building. Oh well, well, jet fuel is pretty hot. But you, you you know what? If you I heard just if you hit it at the top, it'll have a complete free fall straight toward the ground as if previous explosives were planted in there and almost the steel beams were cutting at a forty five degree angle and tons of thermite found at the scene for weeks. First and weeks you guys and weeks are and fucking talking about Hitler, now you're joking. <laughs> but I just figured this that's what they exactly. did with the Georgia Dome. So is that not that's not what they did? No thermite? No, 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 no Actually they probably did thermite. But because it was about- imploded. But speaking and of we're other, back from um, technical difficulties. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, didn't you have another uh, moment of silence? Yeah. Um, earlier when I mentioned, um, are these ovens kosher? I don't like that none of y'all reacted, so I'm just bringing it back again. And then second of all... <laughs> Shout out to Magneto, though. <laughs> 
the numbers on his arms are how many people he killed. Oh wait. Um <laughs> Um, that was actually uh, thanks to F is for family, uh, Nate. Um, a moment of silence. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, the voice of Bulma after yes. thirty years of you know entertaining us with the the hot crazy head antics of Bulma, in which yeah. she's actually stood up to a god on the show. Um, the actress who voiced her uh, passed away, so that's a little sad there. And Della Reese. Hmm. The lady who uh, most famous for getting her my pinky toe. toe? Exactly. She uh, she di- she died early today. So um, and and oh. finally, uh, actually, you're breaking that to me right now. So I didn't even know it because yeah. I. So you're breaking that to me. I don't hey, know. listen. Well, while we're breaking um, other hearts, and shout out to. So I need uh, to at least make a status about her and mention how much I, I've loved all her movies, and then get back to normal tomorrow, right? Yeah, and uh, that your positive thoughts are with her, and our. our oh yeah, yeah. Thoughts prayers, also- thoughts, and prayers. Thoughts and prayers are also with uh, the Justice League. Griffin Doors. They definitely lost. Um, they lost um, sober feelings for all three of us because uh, it did not break that one hundred million dollar mark at all. We're over here in the gentleman's bet to to uh, round out the episode, and all three of us will be taking shots next uh, week. Mm-hmm. How many oh, was a moment it again? of silence for uh, Charlie Manson. Charlie yes, Manson. 83 years old. <laughs> moment of silence for Charlie Manson. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, back to the shots, though. Um, yeah, we're uh, Nate's going to take the least amount of shots. You know, I was listening to the episode from last week, and, yeah, Derek, the exponential thing. <laughs> thank you for that. Appreciate that. It's going to take us what a couple do you mean? episodes to finish those shots. Three shots for every ten million, Derek. <laughs> did, did we all? Did we all? Guys, I mean, psh, wait, I what be, were the not? I was one twenty. You were one twenty five. What was Derek? I was like one twenty nine. Mm, he, he was one twenty. One fifty. One dollar. One twenty and one dollar is what it. One twenty and one dollar. Exactly. That's what it got throttled back down to. One twenty five so, and one dollar. Sorry, one twenty five and one dollar. Yeah, one twenty five and one dollar. Yeah, so it's so so. Nate will take six shots. Derek and I will take, I guess, eight shots. Oh That's my, a lot. eight shots. I feel, oh I feel a fireball too. This is going to be a great podcast. Fireball. <laughs> so yes, if you are listening to the Player Way podcast, you are doing it the Player Way, and that is the alarm right on the dot. 60 minutes, man. We made Boom. it. Boom. Alarm. Shout Bring out to alarm. my co-captains, Derek. System the corrupting, you already know. And Nate. I just want everybody to know I didn't agree with these jokes about uh, the Holocaust or 9-11. And, um, yeah, that's it. They weren't jokes. <laughs> <laughs> these they were look, Do not they joke. Nate, I'm not going to let you sit here and joke about the Holocaust. It was real, and it did happen. It is not a joke, okay? That's right. So anyway. It's um, very expensive. I don't know how much it... Guys, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, and all like two or three viewers, we actually got up to like five at one point uh, on our podcast. Shout out to you guys for watching us live, and we got everybody out there in podcast land listening to us. You can listen to us each and every week on iTunes, Google Play, any place that podcasts are found for free. Because that's how we do it, B. So no matter how many ways you try to decide to go about life, no matter what paths you decide to take, just make sure you're doing that shit the player way. And we'll catch you guys next week. Fun. Fun. Thanks for listening to the Player Way Podcast. Recorded in a single take from Los Angeles, California, Dallas, Texas, and Atlanta, Georgia by Nathan Peterson, Derek Lewis, and BK Jackson. Our opening theme is titled Bound by Ricky Remedy, courtesy of Elysian Records. And our closing theme is titled Coconut King Diaries by Xander, spelled Z-A-H-N-D-E-R. You can find this music by both Ricky Remedy and Xander and many more tracks on SoundCloud. And remember, no matter what choices you make or paths you follow, just make sure you do it the player way.
See you next week.